Well friends, we have two quite stark readings which happened, uh, one at the beginning before we sang our hymn uh, and we symbolically uh, made our procession with Jesus entering Jerusalem. Now at that time you can imagine the excitement, uh, the joy of his disciples and those who are following him. He's going to ride into Jerusalem and be triumphant. But from the very start, from the very beginning of this, things were so different. Now there was a political nature to, to this act as well. Of course people were used to uh, Roman rulers riding into, into towns in this way, but on, on glorious kind of steeds uh, with fanfare and weapons and adorned in beautiful armour. And the people would rush out and welcome them in. And it's almost uh, an act of worship for these Roman leaders. But some say at a very similar time Jesus did this act to when another person was entering Jerusalem. But he didn't do it in the same way. It was a simple uh, cult of a donkey. The people didn't have uh, great things to, to, to give Jesus and they just threw what they had on the ground in front of them. And that's how we symbolize that with the palm branches. Jesus didn't, didn't have beautiful uh, armor on. He, he wore simple peasant clothes. But when he was entering Jerusalem as a king, it was in a way that they simply didn't expect. And of course, the way that Jesus would come to reign as king would be completely different to what people expected. So it was a wonderful and glorious time for people, excited for what was going to come, but they weren't quite yet uh, aware of exactly what that would be. And then we come to the crucifixion of Jesus, uh, dragged before the courts, uh, unwilling to defend himself. As we heard from our epistle, he, you know, he was, didn't see uh, equality with God as something to be exploited. In fact, he humbled himself in every way here on earth. There are some important points to be made from this. Jesus' crucifixion, uh, his proclamation as the one who reigns over us, reminds us uh, and necessitates that actually, you know what, God is with us. God is amongst us. The idea of God sitting in the clouds, you know, like a Zeus figure, uh, a man who sits up there and pulls all the strings uh, that at the time in certain different religions was common and, and unfortunately has, has prevailed in some ways in our society up until now, that's shattered by the crucifixion of Jesus. No longer is God separate. No longer is God the one that sits in the clouds and pulls the strings. But God is with us. The Holy Spirit is the church working together here on earth. And our God decided to humble God's self to be just like God's creation. To feel the pain. To feel the rejection. To feel the embarrassment. And what did that lead to with this great King? Forgiveness. Forgiveness for all of us. Love. Mercy. Compassion. The temple and the, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. What a symbol. The holiest of holies, the place where only the most holy people could go to find God, was torn in two. And what did they find behind there? Nothing. Because this separation is never real. This hidden knowledge, this, this idea that those some people are so much holier and that God is so separate to us and that we'll get some sort of divine understanding uh, and ascend, well, that was overcome by the crucifixion. No longer. Friends, God is with us. Especially at this time, especially in this place when we're feeling confused, when we can't come together as a community, we have to remember wherever we are, in this world, God is there. Whenever we pray for each other, as well, we're praying together. As we enter this Holy Week, uh, my hope is that we, we keep this, this truth deep within our hearts and that it gives us joy and that we fully enter into what is to come this week.
in different ways and new ways and in sometimes being confused how we'll do that. But glory to God who is with us at all times and in all places. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen.